All right. All right, we're live. We're live. Hello, Internet. S Sunday Night Live. Sunday Night Live. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No intention on copyright infringement. <laughs> on that. Not sure there are any late night shows left, to be honest. So, yeah. I think we'll be okay. In England, what kind of late night shows are like popular or uh, were popular? We used to have like panel shows. Really? Similar to like the Japanese panel shows? They'd, no, like they'd talk about the news, but they'd have like a bunch of comedians on. And it'd be like constant swearing. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a slightly uh, British people. Sounds like a slightly dirtier angry. version of like Japanese TV to me. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Dirtier than Japanese TV. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we used to have a show called Room 101. And Room 101 would be like, it's like a room in hell where things get burnt forever. And the presenter would choose things from the week they wanted to burn forever. So, <laughs> so he would explain like the story or some cultural thing or like, I don't know, like... Uh, dogs falling over things on YouTube videos or something. Yeah. And he'd ask the audience, should I put it in room 101? And like, if the cheer was really loud, he'd like walk over to this like faux elevator, put it in and press the button. And then there'd be this animation of it going to hell or something. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> and on the news note, I'm going to pour myself a drink, Alex. Okay. Um, yeah. What are you drinking today? Today, I am going to drink Shoshu, uh, Ichigo, very uh, standard brand in Japan. We actually drank this on the live show before, so just like draining this off, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to drink it with soda today. Okay. Me, I'm drinking some of this Akashi White Oak special blend whiskey. Looks a little more classier than this one. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So we actually just filmed a review of this. If you're curious about our thoughts, please tune in later this week. Uh, it should be up this week, so it'll either be a, a Thursday or a a weekend video next week. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Today we recorded a new spicy video and a whiskey video. Yeah. yeah. They both were good. Cool. Yeah. Spicy videos get the views, so they sure do. Yeah, do the spicy videos. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there's no lack of spicy things to eat. Yeah, or geki kara things recently. So, wasn't geki kara today? No, it wasn't. No, you know, I think people just like torturing themselves. Mm, they like people watching themselves torturing themselves. Yeah, yeah. And I think like the spicy videos just. You know, the packaging is so much more eye-catching, like skulls, fire, yeah, things like that. Just draws people <laughs> in, I guess. So yeah. <laughs> Keep that off to the side. Yeah, but we both enjoy the spicy videos, so why not make them? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. You wanna pour yourself something? You can have a highball or just neat. Or... I'm gonna finish off this highball I have here. Okay, cool. Yeah. Come by. Come by. Hey, Thomas, what's up? It's been a while. It has, yeah, it's been how long since the last live stream we did? It's About been a few weeks. A month or so, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess we had a, a Obon holiday break. Yep. And we've had some slightly unnerving corona numbers recently. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah. And just like scheduling and things. So yeah. <clears throat> it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. We're probably not going to do weekly live streams as we want to focus on the videos, but it's uh, worthwhile doing the one now and again. Like once a month yeah. Or something. Occasionally yeah. is good, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> Before uh, a bomb, for sure, right? Yeah. It was the last one. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So, guys, today I'm wearing this shirt. Because it has a slight similarity to our new branding. I was going to say, it looks a little familiar. <laughs> yeah. 
the idea actually didn't come from this. I actually realized that this afterwards. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think we ever, uh, I never asked you, but um, what inspired you for the new channel banner with the TV and the smoke? Kind of like, like 80s, like music videos. Okay. You know, we have like a, like a old VCR TV or something. Yeah. And the background, like 80s live performances always have like smoke yeah. coming up and yeah. things like that. So kind of inspired by like 80s synth MTV and like that very cool retro mm -hmm. style, which we have going on in the intro video already. So yeah. I thought the brandy could play on that a little bit. A very 80s. Yeah. I guess you wouldn't know we're a food drink review channel looking at it, but same thing. <laughs> but as long as it looks good. Yeah. Honestly, no, right. like with the all black and the smoke, mm. um, obviously the TV is very 80s, but the black and the smoke, I got kind of like David Lynch vibes. Okay. Well, he's yeah. a huge influence on, yeah. on me and you, I guess. So, yeah. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. Tomlin says, uh, Thomas says, kind of like, let's go to the mall by Robin Sparkles. Who's Robin Sparkles? No idea. Singer? I don't know if this is a new person or an old person. I'm either showing my age or showing my ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> But remember, there's so much like music out there for the last 30, 40 years. It's easy yeah. to mix something. Let's have a little look. Robin. Oh, uh, he's talking about, okay, How I Met Your Mother. I've never watched that show. I've never seen it. Oh, okay. I've, uh, I've seen bits and pieces of it, but I know it's very popular. It has mm. some like diehard fans. Mm. Yeah. And it's true. I guess the story, like, unlike many sitcoms that have, like, a very self-contained story, I think How You Met Your Mother kind of has a, like, continual story arc. Mm. Um, Thomas, if you could uh, correct me if I'm wrong, or I don't know. That's what I remember hearing about it. But you've never seen it? Just bits and pieces. Okay. Is it a British show or American show? No, American show. American show. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. You know, like your typical sitcom, you know, like a uh, fake live audience. Okay. A joke is hmm. told. They play a laugh track. Like Ray Romano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Friends. Yeah. Frasier, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know. Was there something weird how he met his mother? Like, why is it called that? I don't know. I don't know the story. I guess that's the title that pulls you in, yeah. right? You want to know how he met the mother. Yeah. So Thomas says, it's a show where the main character narrates the story of how dad met mother. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. And it carries over, like, every season. Like, it's a very long explanation. So it's not, like, a quick story. Uh -huh. What makes it good is that throughout the series has a clear road map from season one to nine. Okay, well, nine seasons. Mm -hmm. Imagine if your friend was telling you a story and it took nine seasons to finish it. I'll probably stop after two or three, I think. Maybe <laughs> one. <laughs> Especially if it was just how I met your mother. Yeah. All right, Dad. I don't know. Yeah. You just tell me the end now. Yeah. Yeah. In general, are you into sitcoms? I was in the 90s. Like, I liked... I didn't like Friends a lot. I watched it just because it was on. Uh, I was a fan of Frasier and Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> They're bringing Frasier back, didn't they? What? Really? They are, yeah. Awesome. Mm. It's so funny you mentioned those two shows. Um, Cheers, I watched, like, you know, it was syndicated. 
when I was growing up. So I watched it like late at night when nothing else was on. Okay. I enjoyed mm-hmm. it. And Frasier, as a kid, it never interested me. I guess it's quite adult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like a couple of years ago, like here in Japan, like I found it on some online streaming site. And I found myself binging it. <laughs> <laughs> like, why am I watching this old 90s sitcom? <laughs> it's pretty good. It was good. Yeah. Very nice, dry humor. What's really funny is that you, Fraser's very camp, isn't he? Right? And he's very like feminine. Mm-hmm. But if you find out about Kelsey Grammer in real life, he's like this hardcore macho Republican guy. Oh, is he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't I know he, anything about Kelsey Grammer. I think he actually run for like he ran for maybe a position, a political oh, position, he? maybe. I just know there's a viral video on YouTube of he's, him. Like, it's like the Rush Limbaugh of sitcom actors, I think. Yeah. On YouTube, there's a, a viral <laughs> video of him like on stage, like giving a speech or something, and like he suddenly like falls off the edge. Have you seen that? It's like super dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> he actually made a TV show after Frasier, where he played like the mayor of a city, hmm. and he's like a very like chauvinistic, powerful, kind of like a bully. Like bullies people, he sexually harasses female star. Like complete opposite to his character in Frasier, which I guess shows his acting depth, right? Because when I watched Frasier, I always thought he was kind of like a like a weak limb, mm-hmm. like into classical music know, snob. Right? Yeah, pretends that he knows cooking, but is actually not very good at cooking, etc. Mm-hmm. Like, like that kind of character, very pretentious like character. But that's his character. David Hyde Pierce, who plays Niles, is actually like super gay in real life. So I think he was just himself. <laughs> <in the show. laughs> I don't know. I'm not surprised. Um, speaking of Kelsey Grammer, I don't remember the specifics, but I think he's had some like tragedies in his life. Hmm. Like several family members having like really. Didn't his daughter die? I don't remember who exactly it was, but several people in his family. My mum might know this. Like, she's watching now. I'm sure, like, he had a child die of like, cancer or something. Really? Like, maybe. I'm not sure. Like, mm. several people in his life had really tragic ends, mm. like, you know, to the level that would probably break most people. Mm. I guess when they bring the show back, they're going to have to explain, like, where Marty went as well. Right? He oh, passed away. Oh, the dog? So. No, 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 the, his father. <laughs> <laughs> the dog's definitely <laughs> gone. That one's easily fixable. <laughs> uh, Is like the first episode back going to be a funeral episode or something? <laughs> well, obviously there would be a... Last time on Frasier, he was yeah. alive. <laughs> there would be a large gap in time, right? Sure, right. You know, a lot of the times when sitcoms are... Like, they could easily explain it like he's in a new city and like he's reminiscing about times with dad or something. So yeah. you can write that into the show, yeah. for sure. Yeah. But honestly, do you think sitcom revivals ever work? Like Full House, for example, they revived it for Netflix, Fuller House. Mm. I haven't seen it, but like, you know, they bring in probably 80, 80% of the same characters. Mm. And I never really watched that show, to be honest with you, in the originally. Oh, uh, okay. So I don't know. That's something I grew up on, like as a little kid. I guess Arrested Development, like I did watch, that came back then. Was it Netflix who brought that back? Yeah, but Arrested Development wasn't gone for a long time, was it? I was saying the video died. Uh oh. Did the video die? Let's see if we're up. Are we online? Oh, okay. Back now. Oh, I might just go. might just dropped out. So okay. Sorry guys. Hello, we're back. Yeah, what were we talking about? So <clears throat> yeah, arrested the minute arrested oh. development came back, didn't it? Do you think it was like as good when it came back? Like, I watched it a little bit, and I just, like, went off it. Honestly, when they brought it back on Netflix, what they did was 
for every episode, they retold the same story, but from the perspective of a different character. Mm. So you could watch the entire season in any order, and it would still make sense. Be because you get the full context from seeing the points of views from ev every person from from their episode. And honestly, I didn't I didn't like that gimmick. Okay. Yeah, I preferred the older, like mm. simple narrative style. Yeah. Old at heart, old fashioned. Yeah. Ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that show was far from Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> we are also a big fan of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. So yeah, I guess that would be one of our favorite sitcoms, right? Yeah, but classified as a that's a sitcom, isn't it? So I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, there's no like laugh track. Yeah, it doesn't have the canned laughter. Yeah, but, I mean, but it's not in a. I would you say it's it's not filmed like it's on a studio or something? They're always like out and around and things. So. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Real quick, favorite uh, phrase or quote from "It's Always Sunny." It wouldn't be a quote. It'd just be like when he first sings, like Charlie Day first sings. What's the song? Uh, Dayman. Dayman. <laughs> <laughs> With like silver nose yeah. and sniffing silver paint. Yeah. So, how about you? Like, like. I forgot the characters' names. What's the evil character's name? The evil. Oh, uh, Dennis. Dennis. Yeah. yeah. The sociopath. Sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much anything that he says about women. Could, yeah. Could be a favorite quote. Right? It's probably the, the most interesting character arc in any sitcom is Dennis. Is because yeah. in like the early seasons, he's pretty normal. <laughs> like he slowly like everyone in the show slowly becomes more and more depraved but yeah. especially dennis yeah <laughs> he's like like patrick bateman serial killer mm -hmm. come the later seasons so yeah like he might have actually like got like women buried in his back garden or something yeah like under the under the building <laughs> or something <laughs> yeah anyway my favorite it's phrase really show. okay uh, yeah. ocular pat down <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, when you mm. see someone sketchy, you know, coming towards you, you want to give them a quick once over. You give them an ocular pat down. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, also cultivating mass. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like when you get that, you cultivate mass. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know an interesting fact about what's his name? McElhenney, Rob McElhenney, yeah. the creator of the show, right? Like the main, I guess he's not the main character, but yeah. He recently bought a football team in England. Soccer team. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Which team? I think it's I think he bought Wrexham or Rotherham, maybe. It's a very small team. Like the count kind of team where if the ball goes off the field, you have to like knock on the neighbor's door to get the ball back. Like that <laughs> size football club. Okay, wow. <laughs> and he bought it with Ryan Reynolds. Hold on a sec. Ryan Reynolds, is he the Deadpool guy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> really? They're good friends, I think. Like, Mikhail Hinney's always like on Ryan Reynolds' Instagram. Really? Yeah. And That's they crazy. just decided to buy this like crappy little football team. I doubt there's any money in it. I don't know. Like, what are they going to do with it? Like, I don't know. It's probably just for, you know, the, the, the passion, right? I think they had to go to like the supporters and the council, like, and we buy it. Like Hollywood actors. So it kind of sounds like the plot to a, a It's Always Sunny episode. Maybe that's just what they're doing. Like just trying <laughs> to act it out in real life or something. <laughs> I mean, maybe they were just drinking like us and like, well, you know, it'd be weird. <laughs> <laughs> what if? We are, rich, we are rich, right? <laughs> I think your mother uh, clarified things for us. Uh, so... It was Kelsey's younger sister. Ah, oh, okay. I thought it was his daughter, sister who died. Mm. She was murdered. Yeah. Uh, tragic. Tragic, yeah. Mm. I think my father talked about, yeah, David liked the X Files. It's not, it's not really a sitcom, does it? 
Uh, some people might drama, sci-fi drama. Yeah, I guess, uh, that's a good show, dude. Mold idea to catch the egg, crack the occasional joke. So yeah, what I like about that show is the variety. Like sometimes you would have like genuine like B movie nineteen fifties episodes, mm-hmm. and then you'd have like more serious episodes, and then occasionally like the main thread, cigarette smoking man episode would come yeah. into it. So. You never really knew what to expect from the next episode. Yeah, always kept you guessing. It, but, um, but to keep coming up with new ideas every week is kind of amazing, considering how many episodes they made. Yeah, it brought up some really good talent too, like um, yeah. the Breaking Bad guy. What's his name? The main guy. The the creator of Breaking Bad. Oh, yes, yeah, right. He worked on it. Yeah, I forgot his name. Um. Anyway, he was a writer on X Files. Yeah, it's a very I, unique name. I think a lot of people who worked on X Files went on to make some of the bigger shows. Really? Yeah. Um, uh, Vince Gilligan. Yeah. Vince, Vince Gilligan, Gilligan yes. Vince Gilligan. Okay. Yeah. And that's right, Gilligan, because I, yeah. I always like thought of Gilligan's Island. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll notice that a lot of people who worked on the Sopranos went on to make the big shows. Like, oh really? Like okay. do you know Mad Men? Yeah. Uh Matt Weiner worked on Sopranos. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. And I think he's also like good friends with Vince Gilligan. So that kind of group who like started the golden age of television, as it's called. Like, yeah, I've heard that phrase thrown out yeah. around a lot. <laughs> yeah. I've actually never seen Sopranos. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have the box set and borrow it. Huh? That would be awesome. Right. Did you buy it here in Japan? Uh, it's a it's a region free box set. Does it have Japanese subtitles? No, probably okay. not. I was going to say because if it did, I could watch it with my wife. It's on. It's on Amazon Prime. Hmm. Another thing. Okay, well. Cool. I guess I can watch it. You should. Oh, oh yeah, right. Okay. Your, I was... your father says we went everywhere to buy X Files cards. Yeah, we did. Like trading yeah. cards? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we used to go to like a monthly convention. Uh-huh. Like people would bring cards or like horror toys, movie toys. So I actually had like the actual X Files folder with like some of the rarer cards. Dude. I still have it. It's in my father's loft. Okay. Really? So That's awesome. Must be worth a lot, I think. So you were so. into like horror toys? Hmm. Did yeah. you collect um Todd McFarlane toys? I had like a few spawn ones. Yeah. Yeah. Those were pretty like good quality for toys. Yeah. Yeah. They're expensive actually. Yeah. Yeah. If you have them still boxed, they'll be worth money. I had a few as a good. You know what they are? No. Obviously, I unboxed them. Right. I had a couple unboxed. I had a Patrick Bateman figure this high. Came with like a a um, raincoat and an axe. Well, obviously. <laughs> and, and a business card. A very tiny really? business card. Yeah. You can put it in his hand. Was it paper? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, see, I was right. He bought Wrexham FC. Ryan Reynolds. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> let's see uh thomas says a weird show called new kids it is from the netherlands a hilarious show that takes place in yeah i can't pronounce that okay. a city i suppose Maskantke. the netherlands that's my best pronunciation new kids do you want to attempt it Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever watch any non-American, non-UK TV shows? I watched a show called Into the Night on Netflix. I was gonna say, like on Netflix, they have some uh, very interesting-looking, mm. like non-English mm. uh, TV shows on there. I think Into the Night is a French production. 
it's about like these people uh, get on an airplane and while they're in the air they discover that there's kind of like if sunrise hits you you die like everything sunrise touches you die so they have to keep flying ahead of the sun yeah so they have to find places to refuel to then like start flying again damn talk about stress yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was like a six-part mini series and i watched the whole thing in one night so but i think season two is coming out next week so go and check it out yeah it was in like french but they had to land in like Scotland in the first episode, so it was quite a bit of English in it as well. It's pretty good. Seen any good movies on Netflix recently? Uh, I watched one called Blood, something like a vampire on an aeroplane. Snakes on a plane? Not snakes on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Blood Red Sky I watched recently I think I've heard of that Interesting So I watched this one on Netflix recently It's about like a woman who uh, She's trying She's going to the US to get some kind of uh, Surgery And terrorists Take over the plane But there's like something wrong with her That's all I'll say Hmm it's a horror, but it was all right. Cool. I watched a very cool Korean movie called uh, Night Night in Paradise. You know, Korean movies are all the rage since Parasite, I guess. So yes. So this one was kind of like a kind of like a Korean mafia movie. Like he does a job and then he has to go into hiding. <laughs> and like, can he hide out? And he's hiding out on Jeju Island. Do you know Jeju Island? Is that the island that's being like um, fought over? I think so. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Between like Korea and China or something. Yeah. Korea and Japan. Korea and Japan. Yeah. yeah. Like there's Jeju Airlines, right? You can fly there from Japan, I think. Yeah. Or take a ferry there. So it's called Night in Paradise. That's Sounds very like interesting. A, kind of like a thriller. Very violent. Cool. But yeah. Can you watch violent movies? Yeah, no like, problem. Like um, super violent movies. Um, yeah, for me, like uh, horror and violence. If it's super over the top and like cheesy, like you know, like blood, like exploding out of people, like you know, very like camp eighties. I love it. It's awesome. <laughs> if it's your standard, you know, like warfare violence, you know, mm. like street violence, mm. I'm okay with it. What I'm not really into is like your like torture violence. Like saw. Like okay. saw. Yeah. Okay. I can't handle that. It's not a good feeling for me. Mm. <laughs> it just makes me feel kind of sick. I think that's the intention, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like Hostel, that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 If you go back and watch Hostel, though, you really don't see much. It's all I haven't camera. seen Hostel, actually. Okay. Really? Yeah, oh. I actively avoided it. <laughs> oh, that's the interesting thing, because you probably avoided it because of what like people said about it and the reputation. I it assumed has, it was like Saw, so I never watched it. It's A lot of it is suggested and off camera. Really? You only hear them like screaming and like, don't do that. Okay. But like, you do see a couple of like horror, horrible things. For sure. Yeah, this one's really cool. So this is an Indone- Indonesian movie. Hmm. Um, I've been kind of getting into this director since I heard him on a podcast. He says the F word more than any other person I've ever heard. And I'm from England. It's like every three words, the director. I'm just talking naturally. <laughs> His English is very good. though. So I watched this one. It's called The Night Comes For Us. Hmm. Very stylish movie. I don't know if you know The Raid. It's like a Indian action movie and uh, this actor is in that movie it's this movie it's called The Night Comes For Us and yeah this actor became like the Indonesian 
Jackie Chan or Bruce Lee, I guess. But he does more like more like a very violent, realistic style than Jackie Chan or Bruce Lee, I'd say. But yeah, like Indonesian like horror, kung fu, fighting style movies kind of becoming popular, I think. I can't think I've ever seen an Indonesian movie before. Really? Yeah. No. I'll definitely check this one out. Very stylish, very well made, very really violent fight scenes. Cool. But really good film. <clears throat> yeah, the director's kind of a horror director, but he wanted to make like something like horror, kung fu, mix in it mm-hmm. together. Very like superhero style characters, but if they were like real people, they don't have like superhero abilities. Yeah, interesting concept. Yeah, my dad says I liked Twin Peaks, but didn't get the plot. David Lynch again. Yeah. Welcome to the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome to everyone who isn't David Lynch. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> if you ask David Lynch to explain, he'll say he probably forgotten. Either. No. <laughs> No, but if you do transcendental meditation, still no. Mr. Lynch, would you like to explain what you mean by uh, your latest movie being spiritual? No. (laughs) (laughs) Would you say it's a horror or an action movie? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> you like Twin Peaks, right? Yeah. You love Twin Peaks, right? Yeah. Mm. You watch the new series too, The Return. Yeah. I think all, even though you like can't really understand necessarily what's going on, it kind of does make sense. In, in like, my opinion, if out. you're watching uh, a Lynch production... And you're trying to yeah. make sense of everything. You're you're, you're it. doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. Yeah. I always feel like if you watch a David Lynch movie, you have to watch it like you're watching like one of your dreams exactly. that's been recorded. So exactly. Yeah. That's how he intends it to be. I think. Yeah. You're supposed to experience it, not and understand it. Like so what much. you get out of it is an individual thing mm-hmm. to you. Doesn't mean it's, it's right like or wrong. It's like a painting. It's about the mm. like emotion or the feeling you get. Right? Mm. Yeah, I think he would say to you, like, there's no right or wrong meaning. It's like what you experience when you watch it. Yeah. I guess some of his movies do have more of a, like, a storyline you can follow. Like Blue Velvet, for example. Yeah. Right? But then things like Inland Empire. Have you seen that? Seen that one? It's the three-hour Laura Dawn. Laura Uh, Dern on a video camera one, really. Yeah. There are a few in the 90s that I haven't seen. Mulholland Drive. I've seen it. But Inland Empire and Wild at Heart. Mm. And one more, I think. Lost Highway? Yeah, those three I haven't seen. Oh, yeah. Lost, Lost Highway is my second favorite David Lynch movie. Really? My third favorite. So, yeah, I'd probably go Blue Velvet, A Razor Head, Lost Highway. But I, I do like Mulholland Drive a lot. So. What about um, Elephant Man? It's your favorite eraser? Mm, favorite movie? Favorite David Lynch movie. I like Blue Velvet more than Eraserhead. Mm. Also, the Twin Peaks movie is good. Fire Walk with Me? Yeah. Mm. And I enjoyed Mulholland Drive, but it's been so long since I've seen it. I watched it with a bunch of friends who were like, you know, you know, when college kids get together, they they heckle everything. <clears throat> so I didn't get to absorb it as much as I would have liked to. Your Blue. father says Blue Velvet was just weird. It really isn't compared to some of these other movies. <laughs> <laughs> Please watch Inland Empire <laughs> or Twin Peaks and the Return. Did you watch that trivia video I sent you last night? Oh, I've got that on my playlist to watch. I'm going to watch it. So apparently, the the leading lady in that movie. Do you know her name? Leading lady in Blue Velvet. Yeah, Laura Dunn. 
Uh, Rosalini. Yes, mm -hmm. her. Apparently, after that movie came out, her agent dropped her. <laughs> Is that due to like the probably. crazy naked probably <laughs> <laughs> mania scene at the end? Yeah, yeah. I would assume so. <laughs> He knows she was in a David Lynch movie, though, right? Hmm? He knows that that was at David Lynch's direction, right? So, uh, I would, yeah. I would assume so. <laughs> I don't think she just turned up like that on set, and David Lynch is like, "Say, hey, what do you know? I'm going to film that." <laughs> <laughs> That's a really hard question, Thomas just asked. What do you say? The most non-cohesive, uncohesive. Incohesive movie. Non-cohesive. Is that in like a bad movie? Like the story was badly written. I mean, because David Lynch movies are designed to be that way. The so. first thing that came to mind was Memento. Oh. Okay. Right. Did that confuse you? No. But I mean, by design, it's non-cohesive. Hmm. Right, because yeah. it's not in order. Did you watch Tenet? No, not yet. My friends in England hate that movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they got offended by it. Uh, on like principle or pr production? Uh, it's like in the dialogue, and like David Lynch's David Lynch, Christopher Nolan's movies are always. They're like it's really difficult to like hear what the actor is saying and they're saying very very complex things mm -hmm. but then maybe not complex things they're just things like christopher nolan just came up with himself mm -hmm. like it's very difficult to explain <clears throat> before we continue um just wanted to mention i'm opening up another snack this is by kalpi it is kappa Ebison, and it looks to be some little shrimp snacks with what, wasabi. Yeah, with wasabi and salt. So, if there are any wasabi lovers out there, you might enjoy this. I don't know. smells very shrimpy. If you don't like shrimp, you might not enjoy this. I have a uncohesive movie. movie. I'm trying to remember. Dude, you should try one of these. Yeah, I'm just trying to find. That's it. Have you seen The Big Sleep? Big Sleep? No, what is that? Humphrey Bogart. No. Old movie. Uh, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. The Big Sleep. Uh, basically, you know the writer Raymond Chandler. Raymond Chandler, he wrote like noir noir detective novels. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, I think, the longer by won the Best Picture Oscar, maybe. <clears throat> but he wrote a series of like noir detective novels, and I read a bunch of them. And one of them is the longer by. And. Recently, I saw an article that this movie is like the most complex movie to follow. Like everybody loves the movie, nobody can explain what happened in the movie at the end <laughs> <laughs> because there are so many characters and there's so many intertwined relationships, and the actors speak so fast. Yeah, like they know what's going on, but you don't. And I think that's a pretty good answer to his question. Yeah, yeah. great. Thanks. So yeah, the the big sleep might be the most difficult movie to follow I've ever seen. 
<clears throat> yeah, I watched Equilibrium. I don't think that was a difficult movie to follow. Did you watch it? I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it? Christian Bale. That was one of those 90s movies where... Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Christian Bale? Hmm. Is that the one where, like, it's like a sci-fi movie, right? Hmm. It, like, where it's all white or something? Yeah, like a trench coat. It's like um, Matrix. The Matrix spawned yeah, all those movies. I have seen that. Okay. Yeah, I I think when I watched that, I didn't know the name. Like, I was at a friend's house at the time, and they had it on TV. I forget the story exactly. Like, they are... It's kind of like a George Orwell kind of thing, isn't it? Like, everyone's, yeah. like, been, like, tricked. Like, in an oppression of society or yeah. something. I guess similar to the Matrix, right? but not with robots. Just mm. people are doing it. So. Mm. Then you had Dark City, like that kind of had the Matrix style going on. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a really cult movie. Like that movie has a lot of fans. I think it's because it's so low budget, but it looks like pretty good for the budget. Mm -hmm. And like a bunch of like really unknown actors. You know? Yeah, it's good. Oh, good wasabi taste. Not too strong. See, for me, recent Netflix movies. They're not Netflix movies, but I watch them on Netflix. Um, one, Ex Machina. Oh, yeah. Yeah, have you seen that? Yep. A good movie. A couple of times, yeah. Makes you really freaked out by AI. <laughs> <laughs> and another one, a classic that I watched for the first time, uh, Lawrence of Arabia. Oh. Have oh. you seen that? Uh, many, many years ago. Yeah. Really? Mm. Really good cinematography. Mm. Like, it's from the 60s, I believe, the 1960s. P Peter O'Toole, is it? Yeah. Even now, everything about the movie is perfect. The only thing that could use an update would be the soundtrack. Because the soundtrack has that like really cheesy, like 1960s like action movie orchestra sound. Mm -hmm. If they were to update the soundtrack, the soundtrack, I think it would be still a very modern Looking movie. So you feel the soundtrack just feels more dated than the movie Everything itself. Else, no, yeah. yeah right. The only dated thing is the music in that mm. movie. I think it's true for a lot of movies that that time. Yeah. But I think if someone were to remake Lawrence of Arabia. Oh, that's inevitably gonna happen. Yeah. I think it should be the guy who did the Blade Runner sequel. That's really funny you just said that because I was literally thinking Ridley Scott's gonna remake that at some point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Villeneuve, Dennis Villeneuve. Okay, yeah, that guy. Well, he's got Dune coming out soon, right? The Dune remake. Is he doing Dune? Yeah, it's already done. <gasps> like the trailers up. I, I knew Dune's coming out, but I didn't know it was that guy. It's him. Yeah. No, no. What? Yeah. He should do Lawrence of Arabia. I think he would nail it. Mm. He'd probably give it a slightly more futuristic. Style. Yep. Whatever. That's that's fine. But <laughs> like most of that movie is all about you know the atmosphere, like the, landscapes. The landscape. Landscapes. Yeah. Yeah. The landscapes in uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine are spectacular. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like everything feels so massive mm -hmm. in that movie. Yeah. If you actually look at the Dune trailer, it's kind of like that. So, do you like David Lynch's Dune? I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, really. Mm. Yeah. I've seen, like, trailers online. It seems, you know, like your standard sci-fi movie. He's kept some of the David Lynch stuff, ideas. Like, I'm assuming you haven't read the book, right? I haven't, you know. But no. uh, when people, like, fight in Dune, they have this, like, kind of technology where they become, like, this moving hologram kind of thing. And he's kept that from David Lynch. Like the exact look of it looks very similar, hmm. just updated. So he probably like respects David Lynch a lot because he definitely is influenced by him. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks kind of like a definitely an IMAX. You want to watch it in IMAX? Oh, that kind sure. of movie. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The Tingler is a great movie. So. The Tingler. <laughs> Vincent Price. Vincent Price, the man, the legend. I think it was like a 1950s horror. Oh, Very okay. silly horror. Yeah. <laughs> As a kid, were there any horror movies that really freaked you out that you couldn't watch? Mm, like films that gave me nightmares, like nightmares, or like they just wouldn't leave your head. The thing. Which one? The thing. Uh, the John Carpenter one. Okay. Really, that didn't uh, bother me at all. Interesting. Really. It was like when the guy like opens his mouth and that like weird alien sound comes out mm. and then they burn him i think it was the idea that like someone could look exactly the same but they're not them anymore that really scared me do you know what my movie is is it a similar thing what? invasion of the body snatchers or something like exorcist oh uh, yeah yeah i yeah, yeah. You told me that same concept though yeah it is true yeah, yeah. that's right but you know there's something wrong with her, right? <laughs> so, no, the thing that's like... You don't say it. <laughs> like in the thing, they look exactly the same. That's what, that's what I mean. Like they yeah. just be uh, like yeah. walking around and like okay. it's an alien. Yeah. But you would never know. Yeah. yeah. Until like their head explodes and all these tentacles come out. <laughs> uh, you should talk to my father about Ixus. So I think he said he walked out. Like at the blood, like spraying out of her, really, like surgery scene or something. Actually, my mother <clears throat> came out in the seventies, right? Seventies. My mother said she saw it in the movie theater, and I don't remember if she walked out, but my mother too was really freaked out by it. She mm. came from a very religious household, so she would have been what like probably a teenager or very very early 20s mm. people were lined up around the block for weeks to see that movie did a lot of money mm -hmm. it's like a major controversy i guess so, but everybody wanted to see it like, yeah. kind of changed horror movies do you know it's sort of halloween that's true yeah do you know what William Freakin did on set to make everyone look so scared? Like his directing techniques <clears throat> on The Exorcist. So he would have like a real loaded shotgun. Just like put it next to their head or something. Like <laughs> or he'd occasionally like throw freezing cold water on someone or slap them around the face right before they're filming. So it'd be like you're like three, two, one, you go bang, go. I have a question. Why are all the good directors like so messed up? <laughs> You'll be messed up to get those performances out of people, I think. <laughs> I know Kubrick did weird stuff to his actors too. Yeah. Shelley Duvall quit acting after the shining. She never acted again. <laughs> the boy too. Really? He never acted again. Wait, wait, wait. That was Shelley Duvall's last movie? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Did Popeye come out before or after that? Maybe Popeye just ended it for a <laughs> <laughs> The acting experience. <laughs> yeah, he like traumatized her to such an extent that she couldn't like go on a movie set again. Hmm. She wouldn't get away with in these days. So that's why you're not gonna see movies like that ever made ever again. So. If that happened if the shiny came out today. Yeah, when we Cubic would be cancelled, I think. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, he's going to be posthumously cancelled anyway. He would be right? James Gunn. Right? <laughs> James Gunn. <laughs> but he got uncancelled. That's right. right. Oh. Because obviously they can't find anyone else to direct those movies. So. <laughs> 70, 70, I think our, our live stream turned into a, a movie chat. It's good, I think. Yeah. Fine with me. We can do yeah. a weekly movie. <laughs> <laughs> Who 
Who wants to hear that? A weekly <laughs> movie chat. <laughs> oh, I've heard about some of the stuff on the Poltergeist. Yeah. I thought Poltergeist was a really good movie. Do you know who directed it? Toby Hooper, who made Texas Chainsaw Massacre. What? Those movies couldn't be more different. But apparently he didn't direct it. Like, Spielberg produced it, and Spielberg just took over, apparently. I was going to say it has more of a Spielberg vibe. It does, yeah. I didn't, I didn't think he had anything to do with it. No, he produced it. He okay, okay. produced okay. it. But apparently he the the rumor is he directed it because he didn't like what uh, Toby who was done uh, so he's like stand over there I I'm see. gonna take over so but it's yeah completely different to Texas Chainsaw Massacre right so. <clears throat> yeah it has more of the whimsical Spielberg sci-fi fantasy feel than it does mm. a horror movie yeah like an attraction like a theme park attraction or that kind of vibe right, right yeah you know, like a ride there are only a few movies i would put in that category like back to the future mm. like et et uh what else uh maybe like one of the star wars movies mm. indiana jones indiana jones yeah ghostbusters ghostbusters yeah Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. Yeah. They all have huge attraction potential. Right? Yeah. Movies yeah. that feel like they were made to make uh, theme park, right? And toys. Yeah. Merchandise. Yeah. Yeah. But they're really good at that. Right. Mm-hmm. So, which is not an easy thing to do, but so, I think. No. <clears throat> Did John Williams do the soundtrack for Poltergeist? I don't know, actually. That's a good question. That's another thing I associate with, like, the theme park movies is John Williams. <laughs> and he got a monopoly on that, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Harry Potter is it. You know Harry Potter too, really? Yeah. I've never seen Harry Potter, so... I've seen only the, the very first one when it came out. So like in the early 2000s, I guess. Mm. Late 90s? I don't remember. Interesting thing about uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So when it first came out, because the like movie screens and like VHS was so low quality, like everyone thought it was just like really badly filmed, really badly made, and mm-hmm. that's why it was good. But recently, it's been like remastered. You can get it in like 4K and all that kind of stuff. And if you watch it, it's like completely different. Like the shot, like juxtaposition and everything, mise en scene is actually genius. It's really? like really well made. Hmm. But it's just because they made it on such like low budget, like crappy film stock, and then just like shot it on like a white sheet at drive-ins or something. Nobody realized how good a movie it was. Mm. But if you watch it back like now on like Blu-ray or something, you realize how well he actually shot that. He it's interesting how, up, so. what like forty years later, your movie can be vindicated. Like yeah, that. after you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Thomas asks, what is your opinion on method acting? Oh, the De Niro question. Method acting, that would be like, for example, Christian Bale, like losing... Oh, machinist. Like all that weight for a role. Yeah. And going into his next role and like getting overweight. Didn't he play like Dick Cheney or something? Oh, I've seen that movie. Yeah. 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 So he lost all his weight for the machinist. Yeah. Have you seen that? He looks like I've, I've seen pictures of him <clears throat> during the filming of that. And then he had to play Batman not long after. Mm-hmm. So he had to like completely reverse his body. Right. From like Do you know how he lost all the weight? C- cigarettes and something else, like hot sauce or something crazy. Apples. <laughs> 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 so Alex, if that, you want to, that strangely sounds like some weird wanna, uh, fat Japanese diet. You're, if you're bored of keto, <laughs> <laughs> okay, and get yourself some of those crappy like Japanese 200 yen pack of cigarettes. Get some apples. Yeah. Go and live on a farm in Aomori for a month. I think I think <laughs> the apple diet was kind of a fad here for a while in Japan. Apple diet. Yeah, just eating apples. 
Do you lose weight especially fast if you just eat apples? I mean, you're just eating apples. <laughs> you could just be eating watermelons or something else. It's like yeah. something special about apples. That... I don't know. I want to do some research. Probably some eccentric blogger <laughs> that started a trend. I mean, look at the machinist though, it works, right? Yeah. But then you just turn into like human skeleton. I don't think you look good if you do that diet. So. You're slowly dying, basically. Well, he's supposed to like look like he's slowly dying in the movie, so yeah. I mean, that diet makes sense. That's method acting. <laughs> you know, Robert De Niro worked as like a taxi driver for like six months before he made taxi driving. Really? Yeah, and he actually drove in like the dangerous areas, like any any anyone really? around him. Hmm. Couldn't do that now. The insurance company would not let you do that now. Oh, as of a, course, as a rich actor. So, um, Jim Carrey, when he made uh, Man on the Moon, you know, you know oh, Andy Kaufman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He pretty much embodied Andy Kaufman, like on and off set for like a long time, like during the entire production. Like when people would try to talk to him, he would only respond as Andy Kaufman. Hmm. Seems like it's like a lost kind of acting. I don't think many actors do that these days. It's it's admirable, but at the same time, like put your put yourself in the shoes of the other actors on set, hmm. like having to deal with that person all day. <laughs> like, oh, fuck. Didn't Joaquin Phoenix do a bit for Joker? Didn't he? Oh, he did it for like some movie that came out many years ago. Like he, it went viral. He went on like David Letterman, and he had a long beard, and he, uh, he seemed all crazy. But... That's when he made that movie, that fake documentary. Yeah, like he's pretended to be a rapper, trying to be a rapper. Yeah, yeah, he had like shades on. Yeah, yeah, and he actually did like shows, like concerts and things. Yeah. Well, that wasn't like method acting. That was him. That was him, like trying to make everyone believe that he was becoming this rapper, okay. that he'd quit acting, mm. and it was just to make this movie. So. Mm-hmm. Let's reject some of the comments. Uh yeah, I do remember the House of Terror in Spain. So when we lived in Spain, there was like this, like very low budget low budget cheap amusement park like very basic ghost houses i guess they were so basic it was kind of effective just people in the dark were in like lame costumes yeah what's a stronger memory from spain is like i used to watch daytime spanish tv so (laughs) it'd be like dragon ball in spanish dub damn and then there'd be like random shows of like It'd be in like the desert, and there'd be this dude wearing like a devil's like cheap Halloween costume, and, like Itumarito, Itumaruladuran, like talking this like, weird Spanish, and then he would like disappear in a puff of like dust. Damn, daytime Spanish TV. Awesome. That, that's very interesting. Like my image of uh, daytime TV from Mexico is probably like that. Is like um, soap operas, like romance dramas yeah yeah right those are super popular Adult, like cheating and, on their wife kind of yeah shows yeah, yeah yeah in japan it's like people getting like stabbed in the office from daytime tv shows daytime tv shows i know there's there's always like fake blood on that sort like, like the, the badly produced like t- uh police dramas yeah and then and then you get like a really old like samurai drama or something like faded colors and yeah yeah what else i don't see much tv during the day infomercials mm. uh what else oh like a panel type show where the the panelists will hear about some kind of murder mystery from overseas like America or, you know, somewhere in Europe. And then they play a reenactment on screen. And then afterwards, all the panelists talk about it. Mm. Very cheap TV. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a lot of Japanese TV. They just buy very, like, cheap stories from America or some other country. Mm-hmm. And they buy, they buy, like, a cheap dramatization of it. Or there's, like, a lot of candid camera stuff. Yeah. 
just like cheap, like a dog jumping off a table or something. Really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the people in the studio react to it or something. Kawaii. Or... Tears. PN. Do you know PN? PN. You don't know PN? I um, probably know what it's I guess about. you're not a high school girl, so it's okay. But Last time I checked, I'm not a high school girl. So. It's a very trendy word right now in Japan. Um, it means basically like like to cry or something. You say PN. It means like I'm sad, I'm crying. PN. A Japanese high school girl, of course yeah. you sound. Yeah. You see it written in like furigana. <laughs> PN. I don't want to be young. I'm yeah. happy I'm my age. I'm fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> also happy I'm not a Japanese high school guy. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is pretty fun. Yeah. Movie chat. Yeah. Gotta do it again. All right. Thanks for the questions, guys. Yeah. The questions. Thank you very much for tuning in. We yeah, mostly talked about movies, but that's good. <laughs> uh, we will be filming another episode after this uh, a gin episode two more episodes oh, that's right a gin episode and a secret episode special episode yes. cool yes. so please stay tuned and yeah catch us for the next live sometime soon three or four weeks later I guess yeah <clears throat> yeah sometime we will announce it. So, yeah. cool. All right. All right. Good evening, guys. Thanks for choosing in. Tuning in. This is David and Alex signing off.